Welcome to UK Business Show, UK's premier business show where we feature business thought leaders, high achievers, and industry experts. Today's episode is brought to you by World Outsourcing Solutions Limited, a company that specializes in helping executive business owners with virtual assistant services and business growth systems. Here's your host. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It's Trevor Stockwell with you again today, and I'm glad you've joined me along with my guest, Stephanie. So Stephanie is a New York Times bestselling author who's written 10 books. She's also a coach and a speaker, and she helps her clients complete the have-tos so they get to do the want-tos. And it's all done by mastering slow living. I'll let Stephanie elaborate more on what that actually means. But first, welcome to the show, Stephanie O'Day. Thank you for having me, Trevor. I'm thrilled to be here. I'm excited. So I'm in California. And you are in the UK, and am I right that yeah. it's so? What I'm at? What time of day are you? It's just after seven PM over here. Okay, so, all right. Mm-hmm. I have always um, thought, and this is just me being silly because it makes no sense. But because you're so far ahead, I feel like you should tell me what the lottery numbers are. <laughs> if only that works. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> that is what I would like. So, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. No, you're fine. It's great to have the opportunity to chat with you. We can tell already that you you have an entrepreneurial mindset, so that that's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really it's really interesting. Um, growing up, um, thankfully, uh, my teachers didn't shame me for it, but I've always sort of had a ping pong brain, and um, I'm a little antsy and wanted to quickly move on to the next thing. So I would absorb things to pass the test and then immediately forget it to move on to the next shiny object. So I think that is a tiny bit of an entrepreneurial mindset that the second I'm done with one book or one project, I'm eager to rush into the next one. And I do feel a little sometimes antsy if I don't have um, a project in the works. And so that I, I do think that's entrepreneurial. Um, but I found that um, the rushing ahead and the hustle and the bustle sometimes means that I'm putting the cart before the horse and I haven't necessarily thought the whole thing out, which is why in the past few years, I've absolutely embraced um, the concept of slow living and just chilled out and calm down and realize that even though the internet is sort of do this, no, 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 now you should do that. Um, it, it's better to just sort of pause and, and think first and, and then act and make a, um, a really methodic and, and thought out plan. And so that's what I'm working on. <laughs> no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And you've been what, in business now for over 12, 13 years or so. Um, so, you're still going. So you've obviously found a way that, that you make it work. And I know you help lots of people as well. Um, maybe just elaborate a little bit more on some of your background and your journey that, that brought you to the place where you thought, right, I'm not going to start doing this. Absolutely. So um, I'm primarily a mom. And, um, and maybe that sounds a little anti-feminist, but even while I was in college, the whole time I was thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah that's great and good. But I'm just going to be a stay at home mom. I I just want to be a mom. And then I got married and my husband uh, was practical and an engineer. And he says, yeah, but um, you need to make money. So, (laughs) and we live in the San Francisco area, which as we all know is a very expensive area to live. So I had this fire in my belly. I needed to find a legitimate way to work from home while raising my children. And, um, for a little while I was running preschool centers and the kids could come to work with me. And so on paper, that seemed like a great Avenue. Um, but it didn't fit right. I didn't want to get out of the house every day. My, um, my little one at the time, she was actually, um, vomiting sporadically and getting sick. And I thought it was daycare germs. Um, it actually ended up being celiac disease, which is a gluten intolerance, Mm. but this was in, uh, 2006 ish. So it wasn't as commonplace or prevalent as it is now. Um, so I really had this sort of fire in my belly determination to help take care of the kids and make money. 
And I um, started researching blogs and um, uh, specifically mom bloggers and people who were writing online and they were getting paid for it. And I had always liked to write, um, but I wasn't necessarily interested in sharing our, our personal family laundry and baggage. I didn't want to complain about the kids and, and talk about diaper contents and, and those type of things. So I realized that um, recipe sites, recipe blogs written by, by women and people online were um, very tightly niched by Google and they had good SEO, which is search engine optimization. And so I started thinking about that and I liked that idea. I am not a cook. I... <laughs> don't actually like cooking. And so I just always grew up throwing things in a crock pot and pushing a button and walking away. So after a Christmas party and probably a little bit too much wine, I joked with my husband, I'm going to make a New Year's resolution and I'm going to write a crock pot blog and I'm going to use my crock pot every day. And this is it. This is what I'm going to do. And it's going to work and it's going to be awesome. And so that's what I did. I started a year of slowcooking.com. And it did take off and it worked really well. And um, even though I didn't like cooking, I learned an awful lot about cooking and, and flavor profiles and, and different things because I had this drive to create something new every day and share it with the, with the readers. And so um, this was prior to Twitter, prior to Pinterest and Instagram. So that site really was the very first crock pot slow cooker recipe site, along with the fact that all of my recipes in order to feed my daughter safely happened to be gluten-free. So it, Google was so happy yeah, because yeah. they were gluten-free crock pot recipes. And um, I had this sort of brainstorm that I would purposely misspell crock pot. So crock pot, the brand is capital C, capital P with a hyphen in the middle. But people in the real world don't write that. They spell it all lowercase, all in word. So that's what I did. And um, and Google was really happy. And um, for a little while, that site brought in $1,000 a day from ads and ad revenue. Wow. Yeah. Impressive. And it, it sounds to me, as I'm listening to you, it's, it's being innovative, but it's just having one or two good ideas. And the timing, you seem to maybe... Maybe I'm oversimplifying this. It almost sounds to me like you stumbled into your your niche, your target market, with kind of the help of your daughter indirectly as well. Um, but yeah, whereas other people struggle to find, you know, where's the best place to to try and help people. But it, was it that simple? Did it seem that simple to you at the time? Yes, and I think sometimes the simple, crazy, uh, harebrained ideas. Are, are actually the ones that are the most exciting. And if you follow them through, you have so much confidence in yourself and motivation because you just kind of want to see it through and see what happens. And at least for myself, if I have a book idea and I just start writing, it ends up working out great. But if I follow the quote unquote rules and I have a thesis and then I write my pair, my, my topic sentences and like do all of the things quote unquote, they tell you to do. Yeah. I don't want to do it anymore. It's not fun. But if I just write and just kind of brain dump, everything ends up working out just fine. So um, with my own kids now for their college essays and then the, the women that have come to me are like, I want to write a book, but I don't know how I'm like, just shovel the sand into the sandbox, just just keep shoveling. And later, later after it's in the box, we will make pretty sandcastles. But but don't worry about all of the things right now. And 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 you know, because you've you run businesses and, and teach uh, clients business techniques, anyone can tell you a step by step approach of what to do. But it's taking all of that knowledge and then applying it to your own life. And if it's not, if it doesn't feel right, you're not going to do it or you're going to do it in a resentful way, which means it's not going to be your best work and you're not going to show up as the real you, which people can smell a phony pretty far away. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. I, I like that. So two of the things that sort of sprung to mind as you're saying that. One of them is, yeah, how often do we just dismiss the so-called wacky ideas that, you know, they're different. So obviously they're not going to work because it's different to what everyone else is like. No, actually, maybe that's the very thing that will help you find your niche, your target market or your next customer and, and, and that sort of thing. Um, but also, yeah, it's, it's not trying to wear other people's clothes in the sense, is it? It's like, yes, there's certain processes that work for certain people, but not everyone's wired the same. So you do have to find, it's almost listen and keep the bits that stick and let the rest go, isn't it? And, and make your own way. Um, it's a really good way you put that. So I like that. I was going to, yeah. um, I was intrigued really because you've written 10 books. I was going to ask you about some of the learning that you've had between, um, we'll get onto the, the have to's and the want to bits as well. Cause I'm oh, sure. intrigued about that, but just, how your journey of writing over, you know, 10 books um, changed or morphed, but is, is it that you learned that early on and you've just followed that each time or have you learned any, anything else that for people listening that I think, "Ah, I know I've got a book in me somewhere. I haven't started it yet. Stephanie's going to tell me how to do it. So So the first five books were published by traditional publishers in New York. And then the second five were self-published. And I had so much more fun with the self-publishing ones because I didn't get edits back where they tried to take out my parenthetical statements and my maybe too many exclamation points. But I always felt sort of like I was being um, edited down and put into a box. And, um, and I didn't like it and it didn't feel good. And, um, I'm, I'm, I'm older and wiser now and a little bit more confident in who I am. And so it feels good now to just write what I want and just trust that the audience will find it. Um, one other thing that really sort of morphed into the, um, the slow living aspect versus the slow cooking is when I started the year of slow cooking website, I, I mean, I, I am not kidding when I do not consider myself a cook or a chef. There were there were a few times I was introduced on t- TV as a home chef. And I thought, oh my goodness gracious, I don't even know how to chop an onion. I use like that pampered chef chopper thingy. I've sliced my fingers more times than I can count. I will never be a hand model. Um, but I don't self-identify as um, a home chef or or a in, in any way. I am very good at the slow cooker. I really am. I understand how it works. I'm happy to teach people. But what I like about the slow cooker in particular is there's so much wiggle room and goofing around. If if you don't like a certain ingredient, don't, don't do it. If you want to stir near the end and taste it, you have plenty of time to tweak the seasonings and all of those kind of things. So while I was doing the website and while the first few books were coming out, I was going to um, food conferences and, and cookbook conferences. And I felt like a poser. I didn't belong there. These were, they were not talking my language. They were talking about outsourcing the, the best truffles. And to me, truffles were chocolate. They, but no, they're talking about the mushroom kind. I had no idea. I, I, I had no idea. And um, so it didn't fit for me. So I always thought I would write books, never thought I would write cookbooks, but that's what the publishers wanted. And so I did it. And then right around 2016, the Instant Pot hit the market. And so my existing book agents and publishers wanted me to translate all of my recipes to Instant Pot recipes. And by then I had already decided, does the world really need another pot roast recipe? Like it just seemed a little fake and phony because the way you write a recipe is you change one or two ingredients and the directions and put a new name on it and it just a new recipe. But I already have done 30 or so pot roast recipes. I am not interested in any way (laughs) of coming up with, with that anymore. Um, but they wanted me to do the same thing over again with the instant pot. 
So I bought an Instant Pot and I goofed around with it for a while. And I just didn't like it. It, it didn't fit my particular mindset and lifestyle. And the reason I like the slow cooker is, again, cooking. We, we touch on this for a second. But to me, cooking is a have to, not something I really want to do. And so I put it on in the morning. I'm still highly caffeinated and coherent. Dinner is set. I can then go on with my day. But with the Instant Pot, you're cooking in the last 45 minutes or so. So you can put a frozen chicken in there, a frozen roast, and in 45 minutes, it's done. But then that means to me, I'm cooking at 4 or 5 or 6 p.m. When I don't want to, when the kids are busy with soccer practice and homework and dance club and the dog needs to go for a walk and we're coming home from work and we have to do all these things. Cooking at that time of day isn't peaceful to me. It's it's rushed. And so, yes, I totally get why people like the Instant Pot, but it doesn't fit me and it didn't feel right. And I ended up with this tiny little voice just constantly telling me, just because you can do something fast, it doesn't mean you should. And so um, I said no. And I, I sort of, I fired the agent I was working with. And um, I took some time away from the internet and just sort of came to terms with what I wanted to do in the next um, stage of my life. And um, coming up with new pot roast recipes was not that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it makes perfect sense to me um yeah and i think it, it takes courage as well at the time though doesn't it to sort of if you've got five books already out there that have done well to then maybe turn down the publishers and say you know no that doesn't seem to fit you know um the box you want to put me in for the next chapter of my life is not where i want to go kind of thing nothing against publishers they have a certain way they do things and that's <laughs> Um, yeah. they, do, they do they do and and my engineering husband was very happy with the advances because we could shovel them into the into the retirement account so thank you thank you book publishers <laughs> <laughs> absolutely yeah no, we love them um but no that's interesting so the, the slow living concept if you like or the perspective the way you use it to help um mums as well as as other individuals um is more if i'm right if i'm hearing you right is more the it's being proactive when you need to be, but also having that measure of not rushing so that you think things through, you plan things, and maybe you don't just go for the first opportunity. You think, actually, what's my heart saying? What feels right for the next step? Is this really me? Those those kind of things. Is that is that a good synopsis? Or Tell me if I'm wrong. Um, you are absolutely correct, Trevor. That is, um, that is what it is. And it is thinking things through and, and following your gut. And then what I tell my own children and the clients that I work with is um, feel the pull and, and not the push. Because if you're pushed into something versus being pulled into it, you're going to throw up resistance. It's not going to feel natural. It's not going to be authentic. And it, it, it sounds so silly, but sometimes the easy path is easy for a reason because that's what your natural um, inclination is. Yeah. And that will always be the easiest path to success. It's actually the best um, path to abundance and fulfillment. But for some reason, we've been trained as a society that if it's too good to be true, it's too good to be true. If it's too easy, it, it's the, there's got, it's got to be a scam or there, there has to be um a, a hidden agenda. And I found that if I just do what feels right, and um, I'm a very moral person, and I have integrity and ethics, and, and I'm not trying to cut corners when it comes in that way, but I just, I kind of just want to do what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah. I, I like the wisdom of that statement, follow the pull, not the push. I, th I think that, but everybody listening, if you forget everything else that's been said, <laughs> obviously go back and listen to it again. But yeah, just capture that and see how that yeah. resonates with where you are and with the things that you're thinking of doing or other people are forcing you or suggesting yeah. and encouraging you to do. Yeah, I think yeah. That, that can save a lot of time. Can't. 
I was on a walk earlier um, this week. So we have um, we have a basset hound puppy. And so basset hounds are um, nice, big, large, slow dogs, but um, they're prone to obesity. And, um, and so we walk an awful lot. And that's my meditative sort of time. And when I, um, I talk with women, I talk about that a lot of the business books and self-help and personal development books are written by men. And um, that's wonderful. But the suggestion to put blinders down and put your head down and, and work, work, work is excellent if you're not waking up in the middle of the night to nurse or because somebody wet the bed or you've got a bloody nose in the middle of the night. So moms in general spring to action. And biologically, that is fantastic because we're keeping, we're keeping the humans uh, populating the earth. Um, but cut yourself some slack. And, um, and it's okay to not be fully driven at 110% at all times. It's okay to compartmentalize um, and, and realize that what works really well for a 40-year-old businessman might not work for you if you've got a two and a four and a six-year-old in the house and, and cut yourself some slack. And it really sort of came to fruition to me um, this past weekend. Um, Amazon Prime suggested to me to watch a documentary that was put up on Brian Tracy. And I love Brian Tracy. Mm. And I've read an awful lot of his books. And the first one that I read was The 21 Success Secrets of Self-Made Millionaires. And I've read that multiple times. I've given it as gifts. I've paid attention to the list. But I've realized that subconsciously, I had a mindset of I wouldn't be successful until I hit all 21 of his things, which if you look at it, probably <laughs> if you name any successful person, there's there's something missing off of that list of 21. It, it is sort of an unsurmountable list. I still have that mindset. I start watching this documentary and there's Brian Tracy. And I think he's a great guy. And he's talking about how he, um, he had some illness that he overcame. Well, one of the things on the list is perfect physical health. So at some point, he did not have something on his own list. I noticed he had a bit of a pot belly. I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. I noticed he was drinking wine. I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. I, his wife was talking about how they raised four children and she needed to quit work because Brian was working so much to run the house and take care of the children. And it was just sort of this like major aha that Brian Tracy is amazing and is absolutely a self-made millionaire and teaches this, but he's actually not doing all of the things on his own list at all the times. Yeah. And it's okay. Yeah, yeah. And and it is just okay. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. It's like, it's good to have things to reference to and to benchmark, I suppose it sounds a bit corporate, but just to measure yourself if you want to progress in certain things, but yeah, trying to do everything at once and, and maintain that level of yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, um, it's it's liberating is it when you realize yeah, yeah yeah that's one of the reasons you know we have teams we have other people to help isn't it you can't do it all Absolutely. ourselves even though we Absolutely. try a lot of the times business owners we try and do it all ourselves um and we sort of <laughs> feel we have to um and if you're a business owner with a wife that is struggling give her some slack <laughs> <laughs> And vice versa, if it works the other way around as well. Uh, yeah. No. Absolutely. No, Absolutely. It's, uh, yeah, that's important. So what would you say one of the other, loving the conversation, by the way, we've got a little bit more time. So let's dig a little bit more into maybe some of the, uh, any other practical things that we haven't shared already um, that can help ladies particularly or the mums or the dads, if, if that's the, the, the role that they're playing from a business side of it. Yeah. Um, well, I, I do, th I do think that, um, one of the best mindset shifts when you are parenting is to realize that you're not raising children. You are raising future adults. And, um, after a certain age, they need to start figuring it out and, and fending for themselves. So one great thing was because I used to run preschool centers and one of them was actually at a homeless shelter. And so we had children as young as 18 months. And um, 
I had those little guys come over and they scraped their plate into the garbage can and stacked the dishes in the dishwasher. Did it take longer? Yes. It took, I don't know, triple the amount of time. Like it, it, it takes a lot of patience and a lot of tongue biting, but it was creating and fostering self-sufficiency and independence and confidence at a very young age. And um, little kids like to dust. You give them a baby wipe, they will happily sit for 20 minutes dusting a baseboard. So there's a lot of self-sufficiency things. Um, I have moms now who write to me and their children are off to college and they are driving two hours every few weeks to pick up the laundry for their college age child and driving it home and then delivering the clean laundry. That needs to stop eventually. Like it's okay. It's okay for them to fail. It's okay for the red shirt to get mixed in with the whites and everything turns pink. That is a learning opportunity and it is just fine. It is fascinating how many women write to me and tell me that their husband won't eat dinner because it's not steak and potatoes, but the wife is trying to eat healthier and wants to do things. So she's making two or three dinners every night. So it, it, it's hard because I don't want to tell anyone else what to do. But at the same time, you are sort of creating some of these um, issues where if you feel like you're doing too much for others, and you're not taking care of yourself and um, supporting yourself and um, honoring your own boundaries, then it's definitely time for some self-reflection because um, yes, you are insanely valuable and nurturing and want to help and be liked by all of the people all of the time, but um, you absolutely need to create some boundaries and and help and teach and model um, growth in others. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. A, because the earlier that we as humans growing up capture that, the more productive we'll be I think we'll find, yeah, we'll find our place a lot quicker. We'll be less reliant on people. We still need to interact with people, but less reliance on them. But also, is there then an element where maybe in the mum's scenario, if they're driving the two hours to to go and get the laundry, it's like, I feel like I'm needed there. Whereas if that's not there, maybe I've not built other interests or other things in my life because I've been so busy through the years looking after the children like I have. Um, I I think midlife for, for, I think midlife for men gets um, made fun of a lot in the media and in television shows and, and movies where they dye their hair and they get the Ferrari and, and that type of thing. But I I do think women absolutely have um, this time where, um, especially when the the children leave and and it's time to self-reflect and, and pay attention to, okay, well now, now it's me time. What am I going to do about it? And and that is when, for many, um, they take up exercising, they take up a class, they go back to school, they they finally write the book, um, things things like that. I think that it's definitely a, a, a period of self reflection and not something to be shoved aside, but something to embrace and and go deep within. Because um, if you did your job right. Um, it, it's you you've got this time now and that is a gift yeah yeah it's almost like within the maybe the corporate world it makes sense that we're looking ahead to develop our skill set our competencies our growth journey for the next chapter whatever we're going to move into but if we take out of the corporate context the principle is still there isn't it but it's i suppose it's having the awareness and the forethought that yeah actually things are going to change in x amount of years from now what can i be building and exploring, you know, what is it that I'm passionate about other than raising the family, yeah. not belittling the family at all, because I think that's a crucial, a crucial role, um, definitely. But yeah, it's, it's building in something else as well, isn't it, that helps navigate yes. that change. Um, absolutely, absolutely. It's really good. They should write cookbooks and things, shouldn't they? Like, <laughs> <laughs> they should write the Instant Pot book, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. No, it's good. In the last minute or so that we have today, so you've mentioned Brian Tracy. I was intrigued, um, just curious. So is he your main mentor? Do you have a mentor or do you, do you follow? Because I know you've grown and you develop in yeah. yourself. I, um, I sort of pick, uh, I pick and choose different aspects of a lot of things. I actually do the same thing with religion. Um, I, I pick and choose the pieces that feel right and I discard the stuff that makes me feel wrong. So... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so, um, uh, but it's, it's taken a while to realize that there's not just one, um, we can use a cooking term, but there's not just one recipe for success. It is, um, figuring out what works for you and trusting that, um, following what feels right to you will end up working in the long run and not, um, changing courses. I sort of teach, um, the, uh, the idea of a GPS. And, um, so a GPS only wants two things. It wants to know where you are and where you're going. And, and that's it. And so if you plug in where you're going and you have this sort of vision and, and again, my suggestion is to go slow, meditate on it, go for long walks, come up with what really looks good to you and write it out. And so that's your destination point. And then just slowly, very slowly start heading that way. If you get sidetracked, your GPS is going to recalculate. Not a problem. Just keep moving towards it. What won't work is if you decide after a few years, your destination is wrong or it's taking too long or it's stupid and you turn around and you go home, then you will, you won't get anywhere and you'll, you'll be stuck in the same spot. But I think holding a vision firmly and making tiny little steps forward is what works. And, and you can use it for career advice. You can use it for, for marriage advice, um, for retirement. You can also use it for many goals such as weight loss or, um, or fitness goals. So, I mean, many times people think they failed because they ate the whole carton of ice cream. No, you ate a whole carton of ice cream. That is okay. Tomorrow is a new day. You can get right back on that same road towards your destination point, but you can't just turn around and go home. Um, and, and it just, uh, feeling that and, and trusting that if we are lucky, life is long and, and it, you don't really have to rush and feel like you failed if, if you haven't met, met all of your goals within whatever ridiculous, uh, timeline you've given yourself. Yeah. yeah. Some wise words there. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's like the goals are there to serve us, aren't they? We're not serving our goals really um if we think actually that goal that i set isn't going to serve the bigger picture so change the goal <laughs> and keep the bigger picture change the goal yeah there's some wise words of start with the end in mind isn't it know where you're going exactly and like you say you touched on about sort of intuition and it's that inner compass isn't it it's learning to to listen to that and give it credibility when maybe it differs to what other people might think is the right choice for you. It's like, no, actually, this is, if I'm going to be true to myself and authentic, this is what I really feel I need to do or I need to explore and, and head towards. Um, yeah. yeah. Wayne Dyer um, used to say uh, not to die with the music still left in you. And um, especially when it comes to like my book ideas, um, I have to see them through because if I don't, they'll sort of haunt me. And I don't want anyone to have that feeling. And um, and so it, if it's not a book idea, maybe it's a screenplay or maybe it's going to Italy and you've been thinking about Italy for 30 years, but you've yet to do it. I don't want anyone to have that feeling yeah. of, of not being able to see to fruition what they've always dreamt about. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. This is really good. Thank you. We've come to the end of our time together today, but maybe actually before we round up this episode, how can people follow you? What's the best way for them to get your books or follow what you're doing now on social uh, media? You bet. So um, the main URL is stephanieoday.com and that's S-T-E-P-H-A-N-I-E-O-D-E-A.com. Okay. Yeah. And then from there, you can get everywhere. Yeah. Employee. Facebook is, yeah. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the things. It's really interesting. Social media is fascinating. At some point we should talk social media. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of good there and then a lot of time wasted there. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, we all individually, we try and find the, the way that works for us but yeah any any help <laughs> that we can all get on that yeah saves a bit of time then so yeah so let's say definitely come back at some point um in the future i would like and, that um, yeah talk to us about social media as well thank you for what you shared today lots of different principles that people can if they're listening 
and proactive can benefit from. If they don't put any of it into practice, we can't help them. But for everybody listening, we believe you will. We know you're smart people, so you're going to put something in that, into action now. And listen to it again if you need to. But I like, my biggest takeaway at this point is follow the pull, not the push. I think that's such a good little nugget, which I will keep and think about and, yeah, think about for a while. Um, so thank you for that. Um, I will listen to it again as well at some point. Um, but appreciate your time and what you've shared today and your wisdom for being generous with sharing your wisdom. Uh, appreciate your time on that. So thank you. Um, until we chat next time. Um, and for everybody listening as well, definitely check out Stephanie's website. Definitely find out how you can continue to learn from her wisdom. Um, yeah, and just connect with her in whichever way works for you. So there'll be a link to her website at the bottom, wherever you're listening to this and wherever you found this podcast. And um, yeah, make sure you put something into action straight away. Otherwise, you'll have wasted your time listening to the podcast. But you won't do that. I know you won't. So it's all good. Let's wrap it up for now. Thanks for joining us and we will catch you next time. Bye for now. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Ukai Business Show. We will be back to bring you more episodes with success stories and advice straight from the experts. Want more? Check out www.ukaibusinessshow.com. Get your free trial of our virtual assistant service today. Just visit www.worldoutsourcingsolutions.com. Quote W O S 1 8 or send us an email at support at worldoutsourcingsolutions.com. Thank you.